As the world increasingly looks to digital technology as one of the key tools on the oil and gas industry's path towards the future, we must ask how it has evolved so far and where we are now. Joining me is Corey Alamont, the Director of Oil and Gas Business Development at edge computing firm Stratus Technologies. Thank you for joining me, Corey. Very excited to discuss. Oh, well, thank you for having me. My pleasure to be here. So uh, to get started, let's sort of define digital transformation. I mean, what are the defining traits of digital transformation today? And um, I mean, I guess also some of the technologies that it includes, what defines them? Yeah, I, I think, you know, when I think about digital transformation and, and the journey we have gone over in the oil and gas industry over the past, let's say, decade, uh, we've been talking about digital transformation for a long time, but what's changed, what's accelerated things? I think about things like uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, you know, the, the driving factors behind the digital transformation. How do we get these types of advanced technology into our processes? Um, I think about, uh, you know, developing the applications uh, for these analytical tools uh, to improve safety of the people in the environment, as well as delivering operational efficiencies to the oil and gas operations. Um, to, uh, you know, for, for the, these, these tools are meant to um, not only uh, enhance the, uh, the performance of the organization, organization financially, but we're also talking about, you know, improving the lives of the individuals that are involved in the processes. And um, then tell me, I guess, how is that, you know, different from previous iterations of digital transformation? How has it evolved or how is it changing? Right. So, you know, the, not only have we had the advancements of the applications, but we also had the interdiction of uh, the uh, industrial Internet of Things. Uh, you know, how has that impacted life? The ability to get low cost devices at the edge. So now there it is, the edge. So how has the edge impacted uh, the, uh, the, the industry as a whole? Uh, because the edge is many things to many people, but this new word edge, what does it mean? How does it function? How is it evolving further the ability to intro, in, introduce uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning into areas where maybe you know, we didn't think compute was even possible? Uh, the, the, the ability to, capture and, and uh, you know, real-time data uh, and, and, and use that real-time data to build profiles of machines and equipment and understand processes in ways that maybe, you know, we couldn't get a true picture of before with timestamp traditional data. Uh, so there's just, you know, this whole emergence of the edge and the internet of things, introducing new ways to measure um, you know, whether it be new types of uh, pressure transmitters or new types of uh, vibration monitors. Uh, there's just this whole emergence of this new line of low cost devices, which are introducing new measurements, which are creating more data into areas where maybe we didn't have the ability to, to, to move all this data from uh, the sites where they're generated to uh, control centers or operation centers. So the, you know, not only have we gone down the road of creating uh, new data points because we're introducing new analytical tools and we're still trying to deal with the traditional uh, communication networks, uh, whether they be cellular, satellite, uh, or, or, or wired, if, if we're lucky enough to have that capability. Uh, but, but how do we now manage this new, uh, you know, multiple megabytes or, or in some places, you know, gigabytes of data and, and, and how do we make it useful into the organization? You know, uh, we don't want to just capture it, collect it and forget about it. We want to capture it, collect it, analyze it and use it as a tool to go forward. Yeah, and that seems to be the general uh, feeling currently in the industries. It's not just about data collection, it's about insight. How do you extract insight from data? Um, there must be millions of sensors uh, on site and it's just looking at the region, millions of sensors collecting data every, you know, every second. How do we 
gather insight out of that. I think you've mentioned some of the key technologies that are involved in that uh, pursuit, but if you could just briefly recap, I mean, which technologies are influencing this evolution the most? Yeah, I, I mean, it's 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 really the, in my mind, the evolution is about doing more with less. Uh, and, and the doing more part is all the new data points that we're introducing into the system, um, which are the end goal is the artificial intelligence and the machine learning introduction into existing processes today. And what does that mean? And what, what does that look like going forward? And it's really... Um, you know, all about collecting all this real-time data and then using it to, to do things like predictive maintenance or enhanced operations. Uh, you know, being able to uh, really look at a, a, a different lens into the operational environment and with a different understanding because now not only are we seeing this timestamp data as we traditionally were provided through SCADA systems, but now we have the ability to collect real-time data and look at real-time operations and use those real-time data points to make analysis of our expensive assets and really understand how they operate, how they function, and what's the best way to use them in our environment. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff. Um, well, thank you for joining me today, Corey. And um, to all of our viewers, thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe and follow us on social media to catch the next episode in this series, which will tackle always on technology in oil and gas.